Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the final day of the Watch Over Palestine Charity Tournament here on um, BPL. I mean, we got Hive Mind and Overwork, two very, very good teams. They're in the top four, Megalas. So they they only need to win two more games and they're the champions of the tournament. Yeah, an amazing charity tournament here uh, for a great cause. As you see, our goal yesterday, it was only ever originally $1,000, but thanks to some amazing people that just sort of gone far and beyond that. So very interested to see if we can get to the new goal of 2K, uh, you know, double. It'd be interesting. But yeah, we have a great game here, as well as an amazing grand finals with one of these two teams featuring uh, later on in the evening. So it really is just going to be interesting to see uh, how it all breaks down. Yeah, it's been a great tournament so far. You know, we've had some interesting, interesting matches thus far. Obviously, the first two days were our four rounds of Swiss. Uh, and now, these these are two of the teams that came out on top, beating out teams like uh, Shikikami overworked last night, beating them in 3-2 fashion to take that spot right out of their hands. Uh, I didn't expect Shikikami to not be here, frankly. They're a... Uh, very, very good team, but that kind of speaks to the quality of the last four teams in this tournament, right? Shikikami, I thought, was one of the best teams in this tournament. And obviously, no. Yeah, now they're, they're not here. Uh, two, uh, <laughs> three other teams made it over them. Four other teams made it over them. Not three. I can't count. I don't know what day it is. You kind of do Today's need four teams for a, a Today's bracket. yesterday. Tomorrow is today. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, those definitely are words in the English language, but yeah gonna be super interesting the breakdown here um hive mind you know they have uh that 4-0 record behind them they've yet to lose some close calls but ultimately getting the job done versus overworked they have experienced one little loss a little bump on the road if you will but you know if you've been around the bpl scene there's some phenomenal uh talent you know names you're gonna recognize right you got people like unfeatured january kern master i mean the whole shebang on that roster so i feel like they, they've got almost a home court advantage flesh you know they've got like the crowd behind them everyone's gonna be happy to see them so here are our rosters keegan Rakuna, wi-fi uh crimson gray seal flex execution the roster for hive mind a bunch of very flexible players over there, clearly. And then overworked, they've got King, Shoreline Pie, January, Kern Master, Silver Tulls, June, unfeatured. Uh, yeah, overworked is definitely kind of loaded with, with some BPL, uh, you know, mm -hmm. veterans, I'd say. Um, so yeah, I do know a lot of those players, Hive Mind. Uh, they're a little more on the uh, unknown side for me personally, mm -hmm. but that's okay because they made it here, and some of the players that I know didn't. So, yeah, a I mean, great, great game. <laughs> great game. Uh, great game. Great game. It's good God, to know I love that, this game. It's good to know that uh, knowing Fletch is not a metric you need uh, hey. heading into these series. Yeah. Uh, ah. you know, it's a guarantee of win or loss here, because uh, otherwise there would be a lot of players on the losing side of that one. But, you yeah. know... Yeah. I think we have yapped enough here. We can definitely start looking forward to the series starting. And it is going to be Hive Mind getting that first pick. They're coming in again, 4-0, flawless, looking beautiful, gorgeous, some might say. Uh, and they're going to take it to Busan here. So very interesting. A little bit of a, you know, few different comps you can play. You're probably going to see dominantly the Malga, uh, unless these teams kind of either shake hands or they butt heads in a different way here. But, you know... Each of the points of Busan, perfect for Malga. So many good chokes that you can sort of just sit in, fire some mini guns, have a good time, and yeah, I can see exactly why Hive Mind picked it. Dude, that cow is getting jiggy. Oh my goodness. Have you listen, that cow when it people go up there and they shoot it and it's the uh, throwing it back as the kids say, Oh my goodness. It's just it's crazy. Oh well cow speaking cow. of uh, it's nighttime, so she's a little more tired. Not gonna see her dancing around in the night. But what we will see is Malga on the side of Overworked, uh, Winston Dive on the side of Hive Mind. I imagine Gray Seal goes over to the Tracer once the TP out of spawn occurs. But uh, Overworked, they're on what is considered the meta here, uh, with January on the Pharaoh, which is one of those uh, flexible picks that comes with this Malga comp. Yeah, absolutely, but 
you know, uh, hive mind their dive. We've seen teams try to run the dive before here into Malga, and you're just required to play at such a fast tempo. Your dive has to be executed, you know, almost instantaneously. You have to make sure you're removing people from the fight because if you give the Malga time, I'm sure that damage will come through the cardiac overdrive, keeping everybody nice and healthy. Mm. There's so many tools, but January's low. Gets the mega health pack, it appears. Stays alive on this Pharah. Now Crimson being pressured by King, but Keegan has jumped on the shoreline. So Cassidy out of the fight here. Keegan, oh, very, very low, gets the cleanse, stays alive uh, in the face of Overwork's high damage output. January had the pressure on the point, but had to run away, avoiding that uh, stomp. Is Keegan there with the bubble? And just like that, it looked like Overwork had a chance, but Hivemind bring it right back. Yeah, uh, Overwork, they kind of did the one thing you shouldn't do on this comp, where they kind of split up. It was almost like a Scooby-Doo episode. Everybody was looking for clues. The only thing they found was their early graves. Um, but now, heading on into the next one here, Hivemind able to set up, you know, in a very favorable position. They can sort of dive oh, wherever they want, but that's God, not favorable. Sean. Two taps on the Tracer there, and now Gracial not in the fight. Neither is Rakuna and ooh, Shoreline. Locked in in that fight for sure, taking it right back at 26. And I mean, like, obviously, yes, there's a lot of members on Overworked, but the cast is just every single member of Dive's Kryptonite. It's just, you can do so much, two-tapping the Tracer, things of that nature, constantly putting in damage here. The pause is being spammed in chat. Everybody laugh at Knock on Wood as it takes him. Just so long to pause, but yeah, we do have a pause on the screen here. Something is fishy in the Overworked uh pond over there so we're just gonna take a look and see what's happening yep i mean pretty even fight thus far throughout this mm -hmm. first map here on busan downtown uh the dive worked out a little bit but then shoreline kind of popped off there in that second fight you know obviously not much has really happened not even an ultimate has been used before we get this pause going so uh, still a lot of Overwatch to play, especially on this map. We're only at like 25% for each of these teams. Um, as we were to figure out what happened with Overworked here. Um, yeah, you were talking about the Cassidy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he can put out a lot of that mid-range damage. And uh, frankly, so can the Pharah. Uh, she's a little more uh, inconsistent, I'd say. Uh, as if the the team isn't like all grouped together and you get all that splash damage um the splash damage is what makes Farah really good uh when especially when you're looking at like a Mauga composition i feel like because like you said the comp is meant to stack right on top of each other uh and you know january has put out a lot of damage here on this Farah already has the barrage ready to go so gonna be looking for that as Hive Mind return it to the fight. Overwork. See, they've got four ultimates here. Hive Mind, they've got five coming up as January continues to put in the damage. Tracer from behind, trying to put some pressure on this, but Hive Mind is being very ginger at the moment. Now, gonna try and find something with the Kitsune Rush from Shoreline. Fine. Pops two with the Dead Eye. Pulse Bomb comes out from Gracial, does not find a target, but so much damage into Keegan. Shoreline Pi takes over the lobby. Yeah, and what makes that super costly is, you know, the ult trade back and forth. Ultimately, Hivemind invested more just to lose that fight out, uh, throwing in the Pulse Bomb, the Primal Rage, and that Katsune Rush, all coming up with Zilch there. Um, you know, and if we're looking towards this Farah duel, right, January doesn't even have to use the Barrage. It can sort of just be a threat. It is something you have to constantly pay attention to, because Hivemind, you know, obviously you have Crimson on this Sojourn here, but that's not really the best hit scan counter to Farah, right? Farah can definitely just live through a a lot of those shots unless it's a rail gun so it'll be interesting to see in the next fight all right cage fight out early crimson has to walk into it to want to try and find anything with the overclock but, uh just not enough coming through does break the cage fight but january's found two already the fight is over the overclock found nothing no, it did not. And again, I mean, Hive Mind, they just sort of invested every ult in the kitchen sink here. They had to. It was that final fight territory here. I don't even think a touch is going to come through in time. Keegan does manage to get there, but. Oh, but it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so Keegan is gone. Hive Mind have to just get the desperation touches rolling. And um, desperation touches in the face of a dead eye is never a fun position to be in. And Rakuna 
Uh, meets that fact there. Shoreline 5 pops that ultimate. Great zoning ultimate it is. And Overworked are going to take map number one here. Yeah. Um, really quickly, I'd like to give a shout out to Yellow Roses from Aldehyde. Ten, that $10 here. We actually passed 1600 now on our donation goal for this uh, charity weekend tournament. That's cool. Yippee. Woohoo. Um, but yeah, just a, you know, pretty solid round from Overworked here. They played their composition beautifully, and Hivemind, again, it's just sort of the dive, it just struggles getting in, right? Because dive, it requires every single member of the team to sort of set up, be in the right position, to execute on it, and they just weren't there. But heading on over to the Sanctuary, maybe they're going to have better luck, especially with Overworked. Heading on over to the Sigma variation now, uh, you see this a lot of times here on uh sanctuary just because the shield placements there's so many good ways to sort of help you know your dps line even further as well as sigma just is a lot more sustainable than amalga here uh just purely again off that shield kinetic grass things of that nature hey hive mind are on the wrecking ball uh changing it up a little bit gonna try and put some pressure on that back line as the engagement uh still has yet to actually do anything there uh january continues to put the pressure in with the rockets trying to find something from afar uh takes a shot there from crimson has to play safe to not die gets the healing uh, stays alive for the moment slam comes through finds a lot of damage forces the immortality field out of silver talls now the wrecking ball rolling right back in trying to find kern master here not able to do it the first flip belongs to overworked and Right now, the health pools are not looking great for Hivemind. Wi-Fi very, very low. Finally going to go down to January. And uh, without Wi-Fi, there's not really going to be much of an engagement here for Hivemind. Just be annoying. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of health pools, right, We talk, I was talking about the Sigma at the start of the game. Hivemind's composition, it really relies on diving these supports that Overwork has because there's just not enough power within their dive comp as it stands down to remove King from the fight here, which is why you're seeing the Sigma be the one to play objective time and again. You really can't remove him. All right, well, they don't got to worry about removing him if January and Silver Tolls are dead. So, I mean, they come in, they slam right into him and King... As you were saying, the last man standing, gonna go down here. Uh, now, Troll Empire follows, and the flip will belong to Hivemind, but 50% is not too shabby for overwork. Yeah, and that's how Hivemind needs to play this with the dive, right? You have to sort of, you know, almost leave the Sigma in the dust, get onto the rest of the team before King can be there to sort of help out. Not the easiest thing in the world, but now that you're having a slight advantage in the ult economy, almost all five ultimates already on live for Hivemind here, this should be able to help propel them through these next couple of fights, uh, especially if they're able to engage early and not let this rotation from Overwork set up in the side ring. All right, here we go. Engagement from Overwork. They have so many tools, as do Hivemind. And the first one is used here. Uh, Pulse Bomb out from Gray Seal and Shoreline Pie is able to pop Keegan here. So the Wrecking Ball is gone and Crimson is the Overclock is going to fade away here. No value out of that Overclock there in Overwork. They use their two ultimates and they get all the value. <laughs> nice little kill on the Silvertail, but ultimately, it's not going to mean all too much with Rakuna going down right after. But yeah, just an ult trade back and forth to the DPS ult to Hivemind for the support ults of Overworked here. So both teams uh, working with, you know, a lot heading into this next fight here. Uh, I will be interested to see if January, again, it's, you know, committing to this barrage is going to be difficult. Uh, there's so many ways that you could just threaten it instead and just be that much more potent. Rakuna throws out the uh, Kitsune Rush. The sound barrier is the response to King's uh, Gravitic Flux. And now it's Rakuna taking it on their own shoulders to try and get rid of the Pharah. But Shoreline Pi gets two here. Two dead at the hands of Shoreline Pi. And January coming in to try and save King here. 92%. And Hivemind get the flip as Silvertals cannot get the heals on the January. But the flip is going to come right back through. It's going to have to be a desperation touch here for Keegan. They don't have the uh, the minefield anymore. The flip denied just barely in January. Booped in to the face of Seal, And now it's been to win for Hivebind. And that is not usually going to be a uh, uh, recipe for success. <laughs> um, yeah. 
No, I mean, it's just unfortunate here. This is probably the end of the round, end of the map. Uh, unless there's a crazy Lucio touch, but I just don't think Wi-Fi will get there in time. So overworked, you know, definitely the underdogs in this matchup, but coming away with the first map here, uh, something I do want to highlight that didn't ultimately end up necessarily being needed. Uh, Silver Tails on that Baptiste doing so much healing, having such an insane output, that being able to build up that second window you saw that just kind of got placed for fun at the end, uh, really it just shows how much that BAP was doing, keeping everybody nice and sustained throughout that, and it showed that the dive from Hive Mind, it was sort of being mitigated just all too well if the sport feels that safe to be able to put out that level of healing. Yeah, uh, I mean, the DPS line of Overwork fragged. <laughs> I mean, you saw I mean, they that play of the game. Yeah. You saw that play of the game, um, and, you know, like you said, Silvertal's outputting so much healing, and when a Baptiste, you know, is obviously very, very good supplemental damage, but when you have a DPS line that's putting out as much damage as Shoreline in January were in that first map, you can kind of sit back and, and say, hey, I'm just going to pump all of the healing that I can into King and worry about dealing damage if I if I absolutely have to, right? So, yeah. I, I mean, Shoreline in January fragged out and Silvertals just said, hey, I'm going to let y'all do y'all's thing. Uh, and obviously it worked out. So oh, Overwork mm -hmm. taking uh, the first map here. I believe our next map type is going to be a hybrid. Yeah, it's it Midtown, be. Blizzard World, and Eichenwald, which are the uh, the maps in the pool. Uh, so, like, what are you what are you thinking right now? Hive Mind. They came out on a Wrecking Ball and a Winston. They tried the dive. Yeah. So, like, where do you think we go? We'll see. That's why I'm most confused, right? Because our pick for of Busan was picked by Hivemind, right? They had that advantage as the higher seed. Um, and they picked Busan knowing they wanted to play Dive, and I feel like... I mean, I guess there wasn't maybe the best control map pool for it, but, you know, it's almost like you, you walked into that. You knew what was going to happen, so willingly uh, having that matchup go your way is something interesting here. Uh, Midtown is going to be the official selection coming through from Hivemind, and I mean, Fletch, we broke this down so much on the first day of the tournament, right? Dive, it just doesn't work on Midtown. It's just not the bread and butter, not what you want to rely on here. But, you know, I mean, there's definitely other options, right? I mean, Hivemind, they're a very flexible team. You know, three flex players that can definitely jump around roles and things like that to fill the gaps in hero pools and things of that nature. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they want to sort of run out on either a Sigma or Malga variation of their own, depending on whether they start on attack or defense. But yeah, it is just going to be um, that sort of question, right? Because if they do intend to roll out on the dive here again, uh it i do not think it's gonna go well for them yeah i mean especially on this first point because i do think that dive is a little bit better on second and third i think that rush is still king overall with the maga and whatnot um it just takes a lot of setup right it, and it's not easy to do on this first point uh, i mean the chokes on this first point are they're brutal in, in a word, right? I mean, it's so hard to get past even playing Rush. Um, so getting a dive set up in, in a place where even like the best compositions have a hard time going through. I, I'm i curious if they're going to change it up here uh, coming into Midtown. I do think that of the, uh, uh, the maps they've got that it, I mean, it's, it's, I guess. Actually, no, it's not the best. I feel like Blizzard World would have been the best uh, pick for Dive uh, if they wanted to run it. So, I, mean, I don't know. I, I'm interested <laughs> to see. Do they go back over to the MAGA? Because they tried it. I mean, they, try, they tried it at the very tail end of round one. That was sort of like a, hey, let's throw this in. But you didn't play a composition that benefits the Malga, right? You were still, everybody else was on dive characters uh, purely because their ultimate was getting close, right? So in those situations, you're sort of forced to it. But Hive Mind, yeah, this is kind of what I want to see here. Uh, now, obviously, 
you know, rolling out on the defense here. It's not the most traditional thing in the world. You're looking at Wi-Fi on the Brigitte instead of that uh, Lucio. But, you know, as we've seen teams prove across this entire weekend, you don't necessarily need this Lucio uh, for your first point defense, right? We've seen teams sub in a Zenyatta or Iari uh, into the slot. This time it's going to be the Brigitte here. And this is going to mean so much more protection for either Rakuna or for Crimson here. Uh, just, again, having an eternal bodyguard, having that shield in front of you, it's going to be really, really great at keeping everybody alive here, especially against the splash damage of the Fara that you're going to have to worry about because January is still going to pilot that one. All right. Here we go. A uh, bit of a change up here for Hivemind. We'll see if the poke works out. Keegan walking down King at the moment takes a lot of damage, has to put up the, uh, the grasp there. Walking up to the train now, getting kind of shoved back a little bit uh, as Overwork just decided they're going to walk through. About half of them are in the fire station and half of them are in the, the front main area. And that's going to work out just fine. The pincer attack from Overwork means that they're going to find pick after pick here in this fight. They're going to get at least two ticks. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if it's more of that pincer. It was just set up in such a beautiful way here. Uh, looks like nobody's really setting up for a touch unless the Briggs gonna bash in last moment, but yeah, it's no touch. Yep, no touch, overworked. Five and a half minutes on the clock here going into the second point. Uh, overworked, they're walking forward trying to take this space away from Hive Mind so that they don't have to worry about fighting in that, uh, that small entry area to point B on the streets. They're pushing back and January gets the better of the Vera duel here. The, uh, the boop there, getting the final blow. Now King walking forward, putting Keegan on their back. Has to put up the grasp again to try and stay alive here. Keegan gets healed up, but overworked. They've taken the space effectively. Yeah, and holding this high ground, it's so pivotal here on uh, this defense of Midtown. But you're seeing Hivemind, they're already ready to contest it with their amplification matrix. Yep, and Matrix out. Rakuna is able to take down Sovatel's Keegan, 65 HP, able to stay alive. King not able to get that final blow. And because of a well-timed uh, and Matrix there from Rakuna, Overworked is going to have to get out. Yeah, and that's a good start to a defense here for Hivemind um, on the second point. And, you know, now they're going to be in much favorable position, right? They can hold this high ground. Uh, Overworked is going to have to expend some resources to try to get up here time and again. But Keegan already going with the floor. Oh, misses! It just whips entirely on King there. Uh, so now Keegan is in no man's land. Has to put up the grass to try uh, and back up now. The Gravitic Flux from Crimson and Shoreline Pie follows it up perfectly with the Deadeye. Uh, knocks down crims in there and uh now the attack the aggression from overwork is going to be big here you see that keegan walks down to this low ground to try and contest the part but it's not going to be enough and uh yeah it's just all stall time here for hive mind yeah uh hive mind they'll get another fight on their defense here before the end of second uh which is going to be crucial right they have their own barrage as well as this uh, Brigitte rally up, you know, giving everybody that extra health, uh, as well as just the insane healing output that Brig can have here, but it's going to be met with a barrage on the other side, so I really have to worry. Alright, Immortality Field out to save the life of Keegan. The barrage from January is good, but it's two for two. The barrages came out from both sides, but both Pharahs felled after the ultimate completed, and now Kernmaster going down meat weight. Did Kernmaster die out of sound barrier was an ajax uh, i don't i don't think so i do not think so but i could be wrong i've been proven wrong before um but yeah so now this defense from high mind they're gonna get another shot at holding the high ground here with an amplification matrix to boot that's exactly what you want okay. to see here um and now you know for overworked right they're gonna have to find a way to push into this or they're just gonna have to hide and sneak their way to cart and try to force the fight back there Yep, they go under the bridge. At least one of them did. Wi-Fi! Wi-Fi push away! Shield bash right into the wall! But January doesn't get traded here. Now, uh, Overworked has rotated over to the point. One meter left, 0.89 is on the board right now. And Shoreline Pie is able to take down Gray Seal. And 
Another rift flux by Keegan. Unfortunately, luckily for Hive Mind, doesn't mean anything there as they managed to hold on uh, 0.89 meters. Listen, you can keep whiffing your fluxes if your defense is going well, right? It's almost like a justifiable thing. Um, but heading into the next one, King, having a Gravitic Flux to combine with Shoreline Pie's uh, Deadeye could be absolutely lethal here uh, against the defense. The only thing that really is ready to answer back is Crimson having a Deadeye of their own. Uh, but there's really no guarantees in that, right? If you, you have to have Sightline to make sure that it works. All right, there's the Gravitic Flux, the sound, or the, not the sound barrier, but the Deadeye from Trollheim Pie came out and found none. Uh, and who? Yeah, January playing for Crimson to get a pick there, uh, trying to sabotage the team. Luckily, four overworked Crimson does not find that pick, and Shoreline Pi is able to clean up the kills, and the capture is there for overwork. Two minutes, 40 seconds on the clock. Yeah, but I mean, considering how fast point A got capped, that was a good defense from Hive Mind. Almost four minutes burned there on point B, and now you're heading into point C. Um, just, you know, it's going to be a little bit more pressure on the Faras, right? You have a roof behind you. You can't exactly just be as free as you were previously, but so far it seems like Hive Mind, you know, this lack of Lucio, it's hurting them slightly because they can't push up as aggressively as good. They're just getting less fights on the defense. All right, Barrage ready for Grace Heal. You see the move back to try and get the pressure off Keegan. Being pressured by January, uh, trying to find something there. Rakuna is actually the one that finds the pick there onto January. Uh, and now the go button is hit for Hive Mind. They're very, very low in the health department, but when overworked is low in the people department, you're okay to take that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it just sucks that Keegan is the one now missing here because Overwork is going to get so much free push here, but they're actually Maybe choosing not. Rakuna putting out the Ant Matrix. Yeah, they choose the aggressive option uh, as they awaited Re Keegan's return, and they've staved off the push of Overwork for the moment. Uh, you see that there's pretty even uh, ults across the board with the exception of that Amplification Matrix, and the first ult is going to be that uh, Gravitic Flux from King. Not gonna be able to find the pick there, but Shoreline in January do! Two for January, used the Barrage. Two for Shoreline, three for January in the fight, and the push continues a minute on the clock for Overwork. Yeah, I really would hope Overwork wins that fight though, right? Investing four ultimates, you really have to get it done here. So now Hive Mind, they're gonna get a last chance defense here. Uh, with some tools to work with, the Gravitic Flux, both DPS ults, really something's gotta come up big though. Ooh. And some great footwork there by Keegan to get the damage off on that Gravitic Flux. Now the Deadeye from Crimson has to be big, but doesn't find a target there. But Shoreline Pie finds three there! Curtain Master cleans up Keegan in point zero, one meters, and make that zero meters for overwork. 32 seconds on the clock, and Shoreline Pie fragging the hell out in that fight. Absolutely insane. Uh, I th really thought the defense was going to come up clutch there and send us to overtime. But as you said, Shoreline Pie uh, just putting in the absolute most on this hit scan roll so far. They've been, just been lights out across these first two maps here. And Hive Mind, they haven't found the exact answer they're looking for yet, right? It's just been a little bit of, you know, bandaging here and there. Uh, some good positioning for that B defense, but really both A and C, you saw how quickly it can crumble uh, when they're just at such a massive ult disadvantage. Their timing just wasn't there, so it'll be interesting to see how Overwork now we're going to play this defense. They are going to have the Lucio in tow. Um, that way they can sort of speed things around, right? They're not adapting like other teams have. Meanwhile, Hive Mind, at least in the spawn room for the time being, Keegan on the Ramatra could be an interesting, uh, at a, you know, an interesting look, right? You're going into more of that brawl style. You're getting up close and personal uh, with the Ramatra. You're expecting your Cassidy to sort of follow in tow uh, and put some damage in where it matters. But really, this might leave a lot of space for January on the far to just rain rockets from above unless somebody can find some time to look up at you know, look up at the sky and remove that far from the equation, if you will. Crazy. We'll see if Hive Mind can get the job done on this Ram Rush. Uh, trying to find something here. Keegan, already half HP, has to sit back and get that healing to stay alive. Rakuna taking a lot of pressure here. 
at the moment actually now with that lucio wi-fi you're going to speed hive mind forward to try and find something here the immortality field used but kern master has fallen gray seal is back on the point here and it's actually a trade of Lucio's. Gracio has to use the recall earlier than they would have liked to, I'm sure, in that fight. Shoreline 5 backs up, gets the healing, and uh, Overworked are so far out uh, in this fight. It's not even funny. I mean, they lost their Lucio early, but just came back and they bowled him back over. Yeah, and that's why I worry uh, about the Ramacho, right? Because once you take that Lucio out of the equation, like you said, it's just such a slow character, as well as, you know, despite having that massive H pool, HP pool, the block, everything that Ramacho has, you can still be pr nuked pretty effectively here by overworked composition. But now dueling Ant Mage to start this one. Ooh, and Kernmaster falls first again, but again, it's a trade for Wi Fi. And Shoreline Pike continues! to put people six feet under three again Stroheim Pie takes the fight into their own hands oh my god the guy's a maniac hello there Shoreline Pie if that's not a name you real recognize by now I mean you really have to right obviously there's a lot of damage coming in from a lot of sources here but really you know, this Cassidy, it's stepping up in such a massive way. Being able to play that mid-range, staying just outside of where Ramatra would be comfortable, and just being able to just fire shot after shot into these fights. It's such a good thing. Um, I mind though, I like this change up. They're now using the alleyways to make their good rotation. And the far off! Okay. Uh, uh, the barrage comes out and it gets the trade, and King eats a pulse bomb! There, it takes down Grayseal! Now it's King's turn! to pop off here. Keegan up in the sky, half HP. No nemesis form to speak of here. Crimson has to save the day, but cannot get more than Silver Tolls. And Shoreline Pie with the dead eye cleans up Crimson and Wi-Fi and overwork. They only need 90 more seconds to hold. Yeah, and so Hive Mind now making some more swaps after using those DPS ults, right? You're seeing the Echo now in play for Gray Seal here uh, instead of the Tracer. I like it. Uh, the Tracer, obviously, it's harder to get into the back line here. They're just so well protected by the defensive positioning of Midtown. Uh, but now with just this Ramatra Annihilation for Keegan as their only tool online, it'd be interesting to see how aggressively they want to go forward with it. Has to pop the annihilation to stay alive, and that's not a position you'd like to be in if you're a hive mind, because that means that Keegan is still very, very low, even with that armor reset. And now, 50 seconds on the clock, they use their only ultimate. They, I mean, it's just gonna have to be a really strong dry fight. Yeah, um, but I worry that it's just not gonna work out for them, right? The Ramatra. It's just, again, once you're in, there has to be a pick coming through almost instantaneously, and they haven't been able to deliver on that. The healing has just been so great from Silver Tolls with another amplification matrix online here. This Baptiste is just doing the most right now for overwork, and, you know, we're heading into what could be final fight here unless Hivemind can put some magic together. Alright, here we go. King backing up, trying to soak up all of that damage, and Keegan can't engage because the amplification matrix came out from silver tolls backs up put the hands up now january uh trying to put the damage in uh has been doing such a good job of that thus far wi-fi gets the touch on the point being pressured uh on the shoreline pie goes down there to gracia with the focusing beam they get a tick but it's not going to be enough to just get a tick and keegan going down means it's going to be so hard and when you don't yeah. have people, it's going to be even harder. Overworked! Stonewall hive mind on Midtown, and they're at match point to go to the finals here. Yeah, absolutely insane performance right now from Overworked here. Hive mind, they definitely were, you know, feeling high and mighty throughout that Swiss stage. They come out of it 4 and 0. Oh, they're, you know, like, oh, we've got this in the bag. We're beating everybody. But they've come up against a stone wall here. Overworked. Uh, or more specifically, Shoreline Pie has just been the answer uh, to put Hive Mind in their place here. And really, I don't know exactly what adaptations you make, right? Uh, you tried out Dive on Map 1, you tried out some Sigma, some Ramatra Brawl, you couldn't piece it together either which way. Uh, it just, you're left in a hole, you're left in a deficit, and now you're in a reverse sweep situation. Yeah, I mean, and you were talking about how, how you know, the Cassidy very, very... Shoreline is just, I mean, uh, Cassidy's strong right now. Shoreline's just that guy, too.
Uh, I mean, guy is ridiculous. Uh, has been for a long time. So, uh, I, I mean, just showing out right now, and so is the rest of the team, right? I mean, when you've got a guy like Shoreline popping off as consistently as he is, uh, you know, it, he, he tends to take the, you know, the front stage. But everybody on Overworked is doing their job. King is finding the pressure uh, on, with that Sigma, right? The Sigma was the pick for King there on Midtown. And uh, Sigma, it, unless you're like a super aggressive Sigma, which most really uh, aren't, it's not really the best way to play Sigma, you're not going to end up in the, the kill feed like a whole, whole lot, right? But the thing that Sigma does is that he spaces out so hard that you like you need to get up in the sigma's face but he just rocks you and walks away and then he puts out more damage and then the pharaoh and the cassidy can just follow up on that damage uh, i mean that's the the give and take of playing this poke composition that we just saw overworked dominate on is hey we get their their new logo in right now uh for overworked that's pretty cool live um, editing yeah li live and in person right here right now Overworked gets a new logo um but yeah I, I mean everybody's just fragging out on overworked right now it's a they're they're playing great yeah absolutely amazing here but not to put the brakes on their momentum uh but we are gonna throw to a quick break of these teams a little bit of a mental reset before heading into flashpoint but make sure everybody sticks around of course we have the conclusion of this match as well as grand finals later on tonight so don't go anywhere we will be right back Welcome back, everybody. Right now, Overworked, they, 
have taken over the match, frankly. I, I mean, they've just looked like the better team uh, in this match so far in Hivemind. They've, their backs are against the wall. They've got one more opportunity to stay alive. Uh, and if they stay alive there, they got one more opportunity after that. Uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, they're up against it for real right now coming into to Flashpoint. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility, right? Hivemind didn't no. have a good reverse sweep uh, against, I believe it was Shikakami. Um, so, you know, not completely off of the table, but, you know, it definitely is not looking favorable right now. I mean, Overwork, they're just playing on another level. And Hivemind, um, outside of a solid defense there for a second on Midtown, they really haven't been able to match it. Uh, in terms of just sort of the raw mechanics, the fight planning, things of that nature. So there is going to have to be a massive step up here from Hive Mind if they do not want to lose out of this bracket. But yeah, I mean, just super hype uh, for overworked here on match point that could propel them into grand finals. Yeah, and I mean, they're they're breaking out all the stops. They want to stay alive here. So uh, for map number three, we're going to New Drunk City. It's going to be a, uh, a bit of a switch up here. You know, we're used to Suravasa uh, for the most part when it comes to Flashpoint map selections. And, uh, you know, I got to imagine that most teams scrim Suravasa as well. So, you know that Hivemind is uh, trying to think of ways that they can pull a fast one on Overworked. And they think New Junk City is the way to go. Uh, I'm really interested to see what their ideas are for this flashpoint map uh going forward yeah uh you know new junk city comes up you immediately think of rush compositions right uh that ramatra could come back in you could play the malga but more of a brawl style uh just sort of in the face constantly 24 7 you know there are options on the table um uh, one thing i don't expect to see um uh, would be probably, I don't know, like Dive. Dive just really isn't favored for New Junk City at all. Um, it's always been the more brawl centric map here. Uh, the Hive Mind picking it, I'm sure they have some sort of strategy in mind. Meanwhile, Overwork, I mean, they just gotta keep doing what they're doing. They showed they could play the Malga, they showed they could play the Sigma. Uh, they haven't really flexed beyond that, but truthfully, they haven't needed to when you have. Um, obviously, we've been highlighting Shoreline Pie the most, right? But January on the Spara has been absolutely incredible as well right just being able to constantly be a threat uh in the skies and you know not even have to change or adapt or anything like that the other team just can't remove you from the equation at all it really is uh it's just so telling of just how good of a far you are here uh, that being said, at least for now, Afara is not being shown January on the Venture here. Uh, and every other member of the team just switched besides the Venture. Uh, so I think they're just kind of trying to build around January. Whatever January needs, you, yep, you can be given that. Uh, meanwhile, I'm on the other side. This is the first time we're seeing them fully commit to the Malga comp. But instead of the Venture, they're going to have Gracial on the Genji in tow. A lot more of a, you know, almost pokey style. But the Genji can definitely get in there and clean up the kills when needed. All right, here we go. Map number three, New Junk City. We will see what Hive Mind can do to try and stay alive here. Maybe Overwork puts it away right now. January hindered up by the Cassidy nade, and uh, accidentally, it appears, it kills Crimson there. <laughs> but it is a trade, so Silver Tulsa does go down. But uh, as January continues to put out these shots, the flip belongs to Overwork. Um, with Gracial going down, there's not really going to be uh they don't want to leave though it seems like as january goes into the dirt uh and finally high will back up yeah uh high mind it's smart for them to just get a proper reset here not have to invest in the fight at all when they don't need to um but now surging back into this one now that they know what they're up against i really want to see if they can punish january force these cooldowns out and then get on the venture after like look at how aggressively january is positioned right now Oh, and there we go. January pops out of the ground and Crimson falls. Uh, now being stomped down is Keegan and overworked, walking forward to take the space. They're they're trying to take everything they can because they don't want to give any space to Hive Mind. Yeah, no, I mean overworked. They definitely want to, you know, they just they want to end this, right? They want to start getting ready for that grand finals here. Not even give Hive Mind a chance. Um, I will be interested to see if they have a touch in time here. It seems like they will, 
Um, but they are just going to be operating at that ult disadvantage heading into this fight. All right, January pops out, and Crimson goes down again. Now the Deadeye from the Cassidy is going to find one, and Gracio finds a second with Shoreline's uh, Deadeye there. Gracio coming alive, but with this sound barrier coming out here, it's not going to be super, super easy for I've Mind to win. Uh, it's just Gracio with the Dragon Blade in the pocket. Not going to pop that. Uh, and it will be Kern Master and King that lock up the first point here for Overworked. Yeah, uh, but keeping that Dragon Blade in the back pocket is super nice, especially when you have the cage to combo it with from Keegan. So I'm very excited to see that combo roll out here. But, I mean, Overworked on the other side of things, right? It was a pretty even ult trade across the board. They still have their own cage as well as a Katsune Rush to help them build up towards all those ultimates they just invested here, especially in terms of your DPS. So it's going to be another interesting fight here where Hivemind's got to find something early, I think. All right, Katsune Rush out from Silver Tolls. I'm not really sure where it's at. Now the cage fight comes in from the other side as well. And, uh, you know, the saying is that usually the late, later ultimate gets the better value. And we see it right there. King's cage fight gets the fight win for overwork there. And they get the first flip here on Bomb Flats. <laughs> Yeah, and so now Hive Mind there without any tools at all heading into this next fight. But the upside is overworked. Use just everything themselves there here, so it will be a dry fight for the time being. You have to worry about January displacing people on this venture here, because um, Hive Mind they need to stay grouped up. They have to be ready to pounce on that Genji damage. But January has been so good at just displacing random members at random times, coming from these angles and just really existing without being punished here on the venture. Continues to put the damage in right now, or at least trying to for the moment is January. Dives right back in and almost doesn't get into the ground there. Pops back out of the ground and now Shoreline's dead eye. Gonna be uh, aggressive here, speeding forward with Kern Master, but ooh, the Kitsune Rush. King very, very low, able to stay alive for a little while. Has the uh, life there, uh, I guess. King somehow stays alive in the fight. For a lot longer than they probably should have but overwork they're gonna get it to 99 percent here on bomb flats before hive mind gets the flip not the cleanest fight at all you lost your malga in the engagement but it doesn't matter how you got it done you got it done at the end of the day here so now hive mind have some percentage on the board here um heading on into the next fight i mean wi-fi sound barrier is going to have to do a lot you know you're trying to mitigate tectonic shock you're trying to mitigate the other sound barrier as well as the Katsune rush but that's a good way to start dead and buried here now january trying to change the course of the fight the sound barrier from kern master trying to do the same and overwork they're just going to back around the corner is that that's uh shoreline pie and Kern Master over there. January enters the fray uh, from the dirt there. Able to stay alive as all of the embers except for January. Here's Crimson able to take that down now. The Kitsune rush out from Silver Talls. Crimson and Gracie'll so damn low, so damn dead. And now there's no chance for Hive Mind to come back in this fight with Wi Fi being the last man standing and gonna go down and overworked or going to go to two to zero here on New Junk City. Ah, man, backs against the wall, I mind. what can you do? Yeah, I mean, there, you know, there's no more room to give. You have to reverse sweep the Flashpoint map to start your reverse sweep in the series. Everything is looking pretty for overclock, overworked right now. Um, but, you know, Hive Mind Silver Lining, right? They're going to have another chance at this Blade Cage combo here. Um, the thing that thwarted it last time, Silver Tail's having an amazingly timed uh, cleansing Juju to get everybody nice and healthy so the splashes could come through, but you can't guarantee that every time. Mm -hmm. Alright, Cage fight out early from King. Able to, they're able to stay alive with the help of the Cardiac uh, Overdrive of Keegan, and now both are dead. January! Finds two in this fight. It's a two for two trade. Uh, can they keep the fight rolling for Hive Mind? 12 HP for Gracie'll. Not gonna be a good thing, frankly, for Hive Mind. As Shoreline Pie decides to say, "Hey, nah, this fight's ours. We're taking it right out of your hands." And overworked, they get the 20% here. 
Yeah, they had Overworked had two healers alive for their Cassidy. Meanwhile, Hive Mind both their DPS and uh, Rakuna were just the ones trying to flip that one. It was sort of an inevitable situation for them here. So now having to take another re-engage after wasting the cage, they held onto the blade. Interestingly enough, here may be able to combine it with a Skatune rush, but this really has to be the fight where you come up big. All right now, the dead eye out from Gray Seal and uh, the. Uh... That, the overhill, oh my god, Shoreline drops down, pops two, and it's gonna be three, maybe, no, not quite able to get the final blow there from the uh, Magnum Grenade, but able to put it down, and Shoreline, pie, my god, four in the fight, and do they touch? I, I mean, you're on Doomfist now, you're looking for that desperation touch, but overworked, they have the number, they... They might get a touch here for final fight here, but it's really not looking great for them. All right, they get a touch. They use the sound barrier from Wi-Fi to try and get the fight rolling, but no chance here in hell for Hivemind to take any kind of actual fight. Overwork, stomp Hivemind out of this tournament. And uh, I mean, that's our number four seed taking down the number one seed. Like, it was never close, Megalass. Overworked from start to finish. They said, this is our tournament to lose. We're not going to let you get in the way. Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. I mean, looking at the record again, right? Hive Mind, they come out 4-0, uh, overworked with that 3-1. and one. But interestingly enough, both these teams, uh, you know, a team we talked about, we hyped up, Shikakami, you know, they both ended up playing them in a map 5 situation. So you thought they'd be comparable, right? That, like, on paper, it made sense for them to have this chance uh, to sort of go toe for toe here, but <sighs> overworked. It just Hive Mind didn't yeah. get a point. Yeah, that that's actually brutal. That to is see. brutal. That's, that is a brutal stomping from a four C to a one C. But hey, overworked. They earned it, right? There's no if ands buts about it. They absolutely delivered here. They're you know hyped up heading into that grand finals now that's sort of momentum you need right for your underdog story you're coming in as the number four seed you got something to prove i mean i'm just looking forward now to grand finals when it happens a little bit later on i want to see if overwork can really take it all the way and display you know just how good they were there uh during this series there yeah uh they're gonna need it right uh obviously that other series on the other side of the bracket uh it's it's also two zero right now if you're uh not keeping up with that other one two to zero in favor of fire puppies at the moment they're going into flashpoint here pretty pretty soon but yeah i i mean that was a, a stomp that was ridiculously well played by overworked and I, I, yeah, I, I definitely think that with the confidence that they're going to get out of this match, they definitely have a shot at taking the tournament. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely agreed with, with, you know, the standings and the people where, you know, I thought Overwork was the underdog coming in here, but they showed that they're anything but, right? My yeah. God, I, that just, yeah, an incredible job by Overworked. And I mean, they're mm -hmm. going to the grand finals. Yeah, grand finals bound here on this charity tournament. Absolutely amazing to see here. Like we said, we still have that stream uh, going on on the A stream, which we're going to raid into after this, because that's also where the grand finals will be happening. But, you know, whether you're in the B stream or the A stream, it does not matter. Make sure you click that donate in the chat if you can. All donations are appreciated. We already blew past $1,000. We get to two thousand dollars that would be absolutely amazing for the palestine children's relief fund it's just been such you know a phenomenal privilege to get to cast just some good overwatch as well as have a good cause behind it you know it's just been such a such a good weekend for the soul yeah and the fact that we blew past our original goal by six hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, i mean 60 um, we made 160 percent of what we thought we'd make I, that is ridiculous, and so we thank you to everyone. Whether you donated, you know, two, three dollars, or your name is Greg, and you <laughs> popped off at the end of the day yesterday. But we, uh, we appreciate everything that uh, y'all helped us out with. And you know, tournament's not over yet. Still got time uh, to get those donations in. If you can, of course, we would greatly appreciate it. But that's gonna do it for us here on the B side. We're going to hop over to the A stream where uh, Zuskies versus Fire Puppies is still going on. So uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope it's a great grand finals going forward.